Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Apologies if you are listening to this recording and having been at our service on Sunday, there was a problem with the recording, so this is being um, repeated in church without anyone present. So the collect for today, this fourth Sunday of Easter. Risen Christ, faithful shepherd of your father's sheep, Teach us to hear your voice and to follow your command that all your people may be gathered into one flock to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the Gospel reading for today. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the first and the last as the Lord and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there'll be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts and prayers on all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. For the first 18 years of my life, the view from my bedroom window was an idyllic picture. We looked out over the rolling hills of Mid Wales, Scattered on the hillside were small white dots, which I took for granted and knew to be sheep. As I grew up, I dreamed of working in the countryside, but farming was definitely not my idea of fun. I thought of being a mobile librarian, serving scattered farms and homesteads in the area. My parents used to say that I would be on to a good thing if I could teach those sheep to read, but otherwise forget it. Added to this problem was the fact that most of the farmers, the shepherds of the sheep, spoke Welsh as their first language, and I never mastered that language. I would be serving neither the sheep nor the shepherds. I abandoned that idea. At this halfway stage of Eastertide, the readings move from the resurrection appearances of Christ and concentrate on one of his I am sayings. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. He's the good shepherd of the Psalms and of the prophets in the Old Testament. Indeed, today, the fourth Sunday of Easter, is often known as Good Shepherd Sunday. And this image is reflected in one of our church windows, and indeed in many church windows throughout the land. 
It's easy for us to get lost in pleasant imagery of our stained glass windows about white fluffy sheep on green hillsides. In reality, the life of a shepherd was anything but picturesque. It was dangerous, it was risky, it was menial. Shepherds spent most of their days roughing it outdoors, night and day. For Jesus to say he was the good shepherd would have been an affront to the religious leaders, as was his reference to false shepherds who were like hired hands and who didn't care for their sheep. This good shepherd was and is especially concerned for the lost, the vulnerable, the troublesome sheep, the ones that were likely to go astray, go through the fence, have its wool torn and probably end up in a ditch of dirty water. How like sheep we humans are at times. Sheep that wander off into dangerous places, escape through a fence and don't hear the call of a shepherd. Our collect or prayer for today is a plea. Teach us, Lord, to hear your voice and to follow your command. Easier said than done. There are many voices calling for our attention, many distractions in life. We are so easily sidetracked by what looks inviting. We get ourselves caught in some thorny problems entangled in guilt and fears. Like sheep, we often do silly things. But just as all sheep are known by their characteristics, by a trusted hand, so the Good Shepherd knows each of our names. The Good Shepherd knows our needs. He knows each of us personally, the good bits and the bad bits, the happy bits and the sad bits. There's nothing about us he doesn't know. He knows our doubts, he knows our questions, he knows what worries us, what makes us anxious. The Good Shepherd's motive is love. He cares deeply for us, his sheep. He doesn't confuse us with any other. He loves each of us enough to lay down his life for each of us, for you and for me. Of course, he will not keep you safe from every ill, but he will walk with you in dark times, not abandon us when life gets tough, like a bad shepherd would. He will keep you from being unforgiven. Strong words of assurance to us, in our struggles to be faithful. In our struggles, the good news is that God has brought you to this place today, a good beginning to the week where together we can listen to the ways of God. Together, we are called to grow in shepherdhood. Yes, Jesus, the good shepherd, calls us forth to be shepherds. In his love for us, we are offered the strength and support to extend the flock. Now, as a church, we don't like the idea of change. We would love to stay where we are, in the warmth and security of the fold. But the Good Shepherd calls us to be a pilgrim flock. We will still have the Good Shepherd to guide us, to go before us, show us the way. And Jesus reminds us that there are others who hear his voice. And sometimes we can draw too tight boundaries around ourselves. We assume that all Christians worship in the same way, have the same culture and values. We're challenged to think how we might have drawn the boundaries of the flock to exclude others because they're different. 
Are there people in this community who feel that the church is distant and remote from their lives? In the last 12 months, our worship leaders have become very aware that more people watch our services online than attend church. We have no problem with that. We acknowledge that 10.30 on a Sunday morning is not convenient for everyone. Some people are not well enough to physically come to this building, and many people have different Sunday routines. Online worship gives people a safe distance to tap into our worship and turn off the bits that don't speak to them. We would, though, like to feel that our services reflect a broad style of worship where the voice of Christ the Good Shepherd calls all who wish to respond. Today's Gospel, then, is not a comfortable story. It's a challenging story. Sunday services remind us that we do not come to God alone. Our worship draws us into community and identifies us as sheep of the Good Shepherd. Being thought of as a sheep is not to demean, but to rescue us from thinking too much of ourselves. Jesus calls us to humility and to trust cautioning us against those who work only for what they get and warning against whatever might snatch or scatters us. Let us, therefore, trust in the Good Shepherd to lead us all to a better pasture than we have ever known. Amen. We're now going to think about some of those words and place our trust in Christ as we listen to the hymn, In Christ Alone, My Hope is Found.
now turn to our prayers. The response to the words, Lord, in your mercy, is hear our prayer. Good Shepherd, we come to you in prayer, knowing that you are already with us, guiding our thoughts and our concerns. Father of all, we pray for your church, that it may be a caring, loving and accepting church. We pray for all who shepherd others, for our archbishops, Justin and Stephen, for bishops, especially our bishops, Paul and Beverly, for those with responsibility of appointing a rector for this united benefice of New Church and Christ Church, for those exploring their calling to ministry, for all ministers and for all in their care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all in positions of leadership and influence in our world, for our government as more COVID restrictions are lifted in the weeks ahead, for all candidates putting themselves forward in the forthcoming local elections, that they may serve the common good. And we continue to pray for courage and strength for our Queen and give thanks for her example and her tolerance. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We remember all who have protected us and guided us in times of need. We give you thanks for the safety and comfort of our own homes. We ask you to protect our loved ones. We pray for those in hospital, all who are ill at home as well as the bereaved, and all who are feeling low, those who are weary of life. We name those who have asked for our prayers. Anne Tansy, John McCauley, Margaret Watson, Anne Roberts, Janice Webb, Anne Chisnell, Joan Blackburn, Catherine Bland, Paul Bland, Anique Platt, Daphne Eastburn, Eileen Nolan, Peter Hodkinson, Wendy Keating, Joan Rimmer, Craig Barton, Margaret Ballantyne, Nina Norton, Val Shilito, for Mandy Mills, Chris Macro, Marcia Cooper, Chris Rigby, Chris Wells, Kelvin Hyam, Lucy Wrench, Stephen Chadwick, James Shillito, Margaret Crook. In the power of the risen Lord, the Good Shepherd, we ask for renewal and refreshment for all whom we have named. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who die unaware that they are precious and valued by God, we pray for those who have recently died to this earthly life. Kevin Daniels, Winifred Jean Green. For those whose ashes will be laid to rest this week, Michael Shortall, Stephen Philip McFarlane. For those whose anniversaries fall during this time, remembering their loved ones. James Keith Blundell. Christopher Smedley. Jack Selway. Ted Lowe. Crid Lewis. Joan Malkin. Good and gracious God, you have received us from the darkness of death and open for us the way to eternal life. 
We bring before you all our friends and loved ones who are now with you in your kingdom. Lord, grant them your love and your light. And we pray in thankfulness for your shepherding of each of us and join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. 